Howdy folks, Dreadshells here and welcome back to World of Tanks. Uh, this is going to be another decision making video uh, in my WZ-131 on Fiery Salient, aka Prokhorovka with Crater Bunkers. Um, and basically kind of showing this as a contrast to the Siegfried line video that I um, showed uh, earlier on my channel of showing how this is a better example of how um, to make good decisions although I make some mistakes in this battle as well but uh, a, a better example of how when you make uh, better decisions consistently then you get uh, uh, better results uh, on a more consistent basis of course uh, so at the start of the battle here analyzing the teams real quick here we can see that the enemy team has a lot of mobility uh, uh, the bat chat tier 9 bat chat t54 um, the t54 e1 even though it's technically classified as a tier 9 medium is kind of this weird hybrid in between a heavy and a medium uh, at tier 9 where it doesn't have the mobility of these uh, other uh, of other tier 9 mediums but it's slightly faster than uh, than heavy tanks and it also has uh, some armor where it can potentially bounce Tortoise is really slow, Tiger is really slow, AMX CDC is fast, Pershing is fast. Um, Mod 1, while not slow, is not fast either, so it's kind of in between. TVP has some potential speed, Charioteer, and their three scouts. So we can see that here that the enemy team have a ton of mobility and a ton of potential view range, right? So, and, and when we compare that to um, uh, the composition on our team here, it's more or less the same. They have a few more mobile tanks than us uh, as we uh, have a Ferdinand down here uh, in the mid-tier. Uh, but it's more or less uh, the same uh, composition as far as speed is concerned and uh, as far as vision is concerned. So uh, it, with that in mind, I don't want, I didn't want to go over here to the 1-2 line. It is a great spot to go uh, on uh, Prokhorovka. Uh, and it is necessary for a scout to go here. Definitely don't leave this flank blind if you're playing on this map in a scout. But I didn't really feel like competing on the 1-2 line here with tier 9 medium tanks and all this potential vision from the tier 8 mediums and 3 scouts. I figured if I tried to go over here to D1 and potentially E1 that I would get spotted uh, by uh, uh, enemy mobility and vision here on the mid ridge here on this F line before I got into position and they would have screened me off or potentially the enemy scouts getting in here into G2. So I didn't want to run the risk of driving all the way over here and then having to run away and relocate and have um, all that dead time of me not helping my team. Plus we have two tier six scouts that can do that job as well, right? Uh, you need to be thinking about what kind of firepower, right? Not just uh, you're a scout as a scout first, right? But also be thinking about what kind of firepower do you have? And uh, since I have the 100 millimeter equipped here in this game, I, I have much more damage potential than uh, the AMX 12T and the Type 64 on my team. So I need to be thinking about myself, where can I do this plurality of vision and damage, right? And uh, I decide to go over to the back side of the hill on, the, uh, on F0. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, my decisions here. Um, as the game is progressing, I don't think I'll pause. I did enough of that in my last video on Siegfried Line. Uh, so uh, I owe it to you guys to give you a shorter decision-making video here. Uh, potentially uh, an option that you can do as you're making your approach from the north spawn uh, uh, rail crossing over here to F0 on the back side of, uh, north of the hill is that you can take a wide arc here into the little village. Um, I don't want to do that here, in, particularly in this in this particular game, because the WZ-131 is not really a fast scout. As you can see, it's uh, only got a 60 kilometers an hour top speed, which isn't slow, but it isn't fast for a scout either, uh, uh, relatively speaking. So uh, I know that I'm going to be having a lot of competition here with uh, these Tier 8 and Tier 9 mediums. want to make that 12T pay uh, right away and uh, relying on the fact that the, the enemy will not be uh, in position and pre-aim there on that position yet as it was still really early in the battle. So we get to that 12T shot up pretty good. And now uh, 
putting a support fire into the middle. This is what uh, the symmetry between the zero line and the six line on Prokhorovka is very important. If your teammates are here on this 5-6 line and in this midridge and they're spotting tanks here on the other side of the midridge here in F5, uh, F6, support them. Uh, they need they need your help in uh, shooting those tanks as they peek up over. All right. And now I'm doing a, 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 a dual roll here, right? I'm trying to keep the top of, of the hill spotted, right? Uh, spotted the CDC in that mod 1. But I'm also uh, trying to support uh, my team down there in 6 line somehow magically bounce off the side of a TVP, uh, tier 8 TVP turret. As that has a lot of armor, apparently. Uh, don't bounce that shot, though. And as you see here, I'm, I'm doing this little technique right here, right? I'm peeking up in between my shots to keep the top of the hill spotted. Wanted to put a nice juicy shot into that charioteer. Uh, really risky exposing myself to fire from the 6 line there as I'm there we go, the TVP on the 6 line puts a shot into me, and luckily he's the only one who shoots at me, right? So that was a, a misplay on my part. Uh, but what I was doing earlier here, and what I'm doing now, is actually the better thing to be doing. Um, don't be exposing yourself to two angles of fire uh, at the same time. I peek up on top of the ridge to see uh, what's up there, right? Like I, like I uh, was doing before. And what I'm going to do here, peek up, try and spot, but don't sit up here when you're using this bush. Uh, I'm going to pause the game here. Said I wasn't, but I <laughs> I uh, have to here for this. Um, don't sit in this bush if you're going to be shooting at this here, okay? Because um, the, the, uh, the south spawn has an advantage in getting onto the hill early, um, because uh, if you look at where the south spawn is it's located in uh, k6 and the north spawn is located in a4 right so it's further over to the east so it's closer to getting to the hill which means it's pretty common for tanks to be uh, on the south spawn to be in here and here and here early uh, by the time that you get up here so even though you might not be spotting them necessarily if they have good enough camo rating uh, they will be in these bushes so if you sit up here in this bush um and shoot over here. Obviously, if you have good enough camo rating, uh, you won't get spotted by by tanks here on the six line. But you'll be exposing yourself to being spotted from this position here, right? You want to stay invisible. You want to stay sneaky and uh, and be a ninja and a scout, right? So what I was doing is pulling up here, spotting, seeing what they were doing. And if I see that my teammates down here on the six line need my support, I reverse back down the hill, right? Going to go into free cam here. All right, I reverse back down the hill like this, right? So I won't be so I won't be spotted by tanks over here. That way I can shoot at range into the six line here without having to worry about getting spotted most of the time, right? Unless there's something with really really super good view range on the six line itself, and that way I can shoot into the six line over and over and over again without uh, too much pressure. And then if I'm not uh, going to be doing that, then I poke back up here and give vision to my team. And we can see there that a Tiger II is uh, making his way up the inside line on the 7 line from the south. It's a really, really, really bad line to take late and or early, uh, and you never should do this if you know that the uh, enemy team might have tanks here on the hill. So don't do what this Tiger 2 is doing for th this particular reason. It's really, really easy to spot the 7 line from the back side of the hill where my, me and my team are in uh, F0. And you just get completely wrecked like that Tiger 2 did. Get a nice shot there into the T-54E1's turret, which can be troll sometimes, so it's nice that we bounce, or excuse me, that we pen that. And as long as these guys are going to be peeking up there, I want to support them. Now, uh, peeking up here again to uh, keep some vision on top of the hill, right? You always need to be thinking about where's the blind spot for our team. I don't want us to sit here too long uh, on the back side of the hill and potentially potentially the, um, the enemy team will have moved up on top of us, right? If I... 
if we sit back here too long for an extended period of time shooting into the middle right shooting into the middle is good uh, for supporting right but if we sit back here too long no one's looking up over here to the top of the hill to see if the enemy had advanced from there back side of the hill up onto the top of us right we want to know as they're crossing right not until uh um when they get on top of us when they get on top of us it's too late um and our team won't have as good shots right just like we can support the sixth line the sit the sixth line can support us and they can much better support us if you spot the enemy tanks crossing the top of the hill early from here rather than here Now, just kind of a little lull in the engagement here. Uh, it's a good uh, time to be patient, right? If all the tactical positioning is correct, and you look that uh, our team has a really, really, really excellent dispersion uh, uh, on the north side of the spawn here. Get a nice shot here and secure the kill on the SP-1C um, as he didn't have any traverse. It was a long range shot, but he was didn't have any traverse on us, so it was really easy to aim the shot as there wasn't much lead. Turns out the tier 9 bat chat was up there in stealth that whole time. Let's see what I'm saying. It's kind of hard to spot that sometimes. But he drops off the back side of the hill and now he kind of gave us the top of the hill. Now the T-54 on the enemy team here is taking shots at our M-103 there. Trying to sneak a shot in between uh, the, the hitbox of the rail uh, ridge and the turret of the T-54, but it's a really, th really thin shot and I wasn't able to hit it. Now that our team have pushed up onto the top of the hill here, uh, I am moving up to support. I should have done it earlier. And now that the, the back of the, the bat chat is exposed here as he's not hugging the ridge line, I take advantage of that and get a nice juicy shot into the back of him. Now he realizes this is his mistake and he's moving up underneath our gun line so we don't have uh, any more shots at him. Reload a uh, premium shell here for uh, securing the kill on the T-54 Mod 1 as the uh, Mod 1 has really, really good troll armor and I just want to uh, secure the kill and not lose too much HP from this guy. Hold my shot until I get to the side of them there and not waste my shot at the, the front of his tank. Take the more guaranteed pen. Nice that uh, I think either the 103 or the uh, 5100 on my team puts one shot into the tier 9 enemy bat chat there uh, just before I shoot him that puts him down to potentially a, a one shot for us and we were lucky enough to roll a little bit high there, uh, 5 uh, damage roll higher and uh, secure the kill. Uh, aim a little bit high and the shell goes high itself so that multiply with each other and the shell goes up ending up high and hitting the t-54 in the turret and instead of the side of the hole so unfortunately we bounce our shot there and uh now it's just cleanup time the t-54 is a one shot and uh we just gotta fire the m12 approaching my angle here high up on the elevation here so i have a, a shot into the the k1 k2 area as that's a little bit in a depression so position positioning myself in a way to take advantage of spotted enemy tanks and we sneak in the kill on the t54 somehow i, I have no idea how with the, the tbp t34 uh what is that cdc and 12t all there they could have uh, killed him but uh they must have not had a good shot on him. I don't know. They should have. Anyway, so pretty uh, lopsided outcome, right? But uh, I wanted to uh, show this game um, to illustrate basically how to um, play a plurality of roles in the battle, uh, which you often have to do in a scout, right? You have to be giving vision to your team and you have to be uh, doing your own damage as well. And... Uh, I did make a mistake once or twice here, exposing myself to uh, both angles at the same time, but I think for the most part I played this fairly okay, where if I was shooting into the middle, I was reversed back on the hill, so I wasn't exposed to uh, vision and fire the enemy t team on their side of the hill in H0 and in G0. That way I could shoot with impunity here into the 5 and 6 line, and if my team needed vision onto the top of the hill, I periodically poked up uh, every... Uh, 20 30 seconds I wasn't really counting there so I'm not sure but periodically peeking up to make sure that we would know if the enemy were advancing across the top of the hill so 
Uh, it would give us time to react ourselves as we are on the backside of the hill in F0. And it would give our teammates a chance to help us out who are on the 5, 6, and 7 lines as the, uh, the tortoise was back here in D7, E7, I think, uh, part of the game. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching uh, this uh, game on uh, on Fiery Salient, aka Prokhorovka, with uh, bunkers and uh, and uh, tank wrecks. <laughs> uh, wish you guys the best of luck out there and uh, playing that position from the north side of the hill uh, on uh, Prokhorovka Fiery Salient. Good luck out there and happy hunting.